and we are live. Good morning. My name is Bob. James Bob. That's right. Check out Gun Carrier today. Welcome to another episode, the 230th episode of Gun News Weekly. What's up, everybody? Kevin the Tag Daddy's in the house. Ross is here with us. What's up, brother? What's happening, brother? I am uh, just glad it's Thursday. It is. And uh, the Googler's with us. What's up, buddy? Not much. Everything good in your world? I forgot to ask you a question prior. I don't think I have time to look it up. Type it out. Uh, yeah, if I get a chance, I will type it out. We got quite a full show here tonight. Casey will be jumping in in just a second. He joined us uh, while we were live on Facebook. He'll be jumping in in just a couple minutes as he gets settled in the house. He works hard. He's getting home late tonight. So, uh, but we're ready to roll. Ross, what do you like? What do you think about the new lower third? I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I think you know. I was thinking earlier that we need to outline this in white because there is such a dark. You know what I mean? I got a couple different versions of it today. We wanted to get one or two up. We'll have a whole new uh, opening thing next week as well uh opening credits etc cetera, etc cetera. so maybe we'll tweak it a little bit i, I like it i think it's kind of cool. like it, yeah. shout out to guncarrier.com there again the reason we're uh, making the switch much bigger audience much uh deeper community to get involved with and again welcome aboard let's get right to it and let's get into the gun news of the week we just missed this one by a day last week but i'm glad because some details have come out this uh entertainer jamie johnson canceled a late July concert in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, prom uh, prompting outrage online because he announced it. It was on Facebook, and it all of a sudden, he just didn't do his concert. And basically what we found out was they he objected to the fact that they wouldn't let his team, his crew, or maybe even him conceal carry at the concert while they were performing. Sounds like the local... Um, parent company of the House of Blues, Live Nation, they have a firm no weapons policy that applies to audience members and performers alike. Uh, the rule became even more ironclad earlier this year after that uh, Ariana Grande concert. They said everyone needs to leave their weapons at home. And so they say it's a complicated story. They set up literally in between the buses uh, metal detectors and people with wands. So when they got off, there was only one way plate way for them to go at the way they were parked. They had to go through. He's like, wait a minute. What, what's this all about? No one's really talking. Um, but what's interesting is before launching his, his, uh, music career, Johnson received nearly a decade's worth of weapons training from the American government. He was a Marine from 95 to 2003, working as a mortar man, um, and rising to the rank of corporal before completing his service. He was always carrying an actual weapon. They don't know if he was carrying a weapon or if he simply took issue with the venue's refusal to allow legally permitted fam, uh, firearms into the building. A recurring topic here tonight, Ross, we're going to have a couple stories about this. Um, meanwhile, the tour rolled on. He went to the next stop, and away he goes. Uh, uh, you know, I, on, on one hand, I'm, I'm – totally in favor of what he did. As a matter of fact, I think pretty much in both hands, I'm in favor of what he did. Um, only because you, you, the, the, the truth behind laws like that is they only stop law abiding people from being able to protect themselves. There's no criminal that's going to be afraid to break that law if they're going in there to kill people. Um, and the sooner we come away from the nanny state here and try to, try to use a little common sense and kind of bring, bring this country back into reality. Um, you can't, you can't stop bad people from doing bad things, but you can certainly stop good people from protecting themselves. And really I wish the script would flip to that because that is the truth in, in laws like that. Correct. Uh, his, his drummer said, quote, I stand with Johnson on this house of blues. Didn't need to treat us like we were terrorists. Um, we didn't come to that House of Blues to be treated like we were going to kill the fans. If someone came backstage to harm anybody, you better pray there is a Jamie Johnson type individual around. Interesting. So good up to I, him. How are they going to protect 
yourself if somebody does go back there. You know what I mean? And and, and I don't know. It just doesn't. Well, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, the same way that the the uh, entertainment and security company claims that they want to bump it up after they saw what happened with Ariana Grande. As a performer, wouldn't you, if you're a trained carrier, to be able to uh, again carry your permit, carry your license, carry your gun wherever you go? So yeah, wouldn't you? Have, especially after the area Ariana Grande, if you were a performer. Uh, wouldn't that be paramount that you were that you your safety? I mean, people are targeting concerts for all we know now. Um, well, that's interesting. interesting. There's all these little web connections tonight, Ross. One of this, keep in mind, this our source on this one is Rolling Stone Online. It's RollingStone.com. So the, switching gears, but keeping in the same topic, over on the American Gun Association Facebook page, um, and we shared it over on Gun uh, Carrier. List of 53 gun banning companies that don't want your business. Man, this got a hit, a huge reach, a bunch of shares, and a bunch of comments today um, with lots of people participating and giving their take on why they choose to ignore signs like those, et cetera. But let's take a look at this list. Um, I'll put it up. Yeah, I can put it up and share it. But some of them jump off the page, including number 35. Rolling Stone Magazine. Southern Theaters, there's a bunch of theater companies. There's a bunch of shopping mall companies on the list. Um, and then there's overall brands like Bloomin Brands, which includes Outback, Ross, Outback, Carabas, yeah. and others. Uh, CNN, no, no big shocker there. Goodyear surprises me. Uh, Google does not. No, not at all. Hooters surprises Hooters. me. Hooters really surprises me. Ikea? It's kind of interesting. That doesn't surprise me. The Swiss? Well, I don't know. The Swiss are they, everybody in, in Sweden is armed, aren't they? Yeah. New York Times, no big surprise. TGI Fridays. Starbucks we've talked about in the past and know about. Um, Starbucks is an interesting one. I You know they are closing something like close to 600 stores. Who is? Starbucks. I don't know. Earnings just came out and the stock market's through the roof and everyone's crushing it right now. So I'm surprised to hear that one. Whole Foods, no big surprise. Starbucks, Starbucks came out and said that they would hire uh, uh, refugees before. You're talking about a story that was a bunch of crap from months ago. That was yeah, months ago. But, but dude, it hurt them. It hurt them bad. They're closing right, that story. Was, stores. That story was not true though. Uh, but. If they're losing stores, that's just a call. You know, they, that could just be they grew too big and now they're coming back down to size because they are everywhere. We've got two new ones coming in, in in our county here that I'm aware of right now. I don't know why anybody would put themselves in a, if in a business position would put themselves on that list or or, wow. or be allowed anybody to put them on that list. That's you're basically you're you're basically shunning your customers. What's what's the, the the basic sentiment online on on again on the American Gun Association Facebook page was basically either I ignore it, it's called concealed, therefore it's concealed, therefore no one knows, so I don't care that they put up a sign. Um, and the other one was I don't go there. I just don't go to these places anymore. Um, I have no problem going where I need to go and doing what I need to do, and I don't really care what some company has decided is their gun policy. That's just me. Um, if I need a cup of coffee and there's a Starbucks there, I'm going. Again, that policy is for law-abiding citizens. That's all. A lot of kids People stuff going there too. with with nobody's going to put down a gun if they see that sign. If they're going there to do damage to somebody, it's it's that's not going to happen. The only people that are going to put down their guns are, are law-abiding citizens. One it's place stupid. that I one place that I know I'm I'm very happy that I have a gun on me every time is the bank. U.S. Bank is on this list. If a bank told me I I literally couldn't go into their bank if I'm trained and again I have I have a sound mind and I'm an adult and I carry a gun I, it's crazy that's crazy to me that's where shit goes I, down. I think it's funny I think it's funny that that the the climate today you're seeing more more and I don't mean to get political don't get me wrong but more activism from from this side of the two a side you know what I mean you're seeing more of these boycotts you're seeing people willing to stand up for their Second Amendment right. I mean, to the point of. But Ross, the list is more of people like Moms Demand Action using the list to say that they're strong and look at all these great companies that won't, you know, that don't have a gun policy and say no guns. 
Sure, that's great. Why would they allow themselves to be put on that? I mean, I don't know. It, it, they, it, it's their philosophy. It's their business. They can run the way they want yeah, to. But, but you will football. lose. You will lose customers, and that's not the point of running a business to lose customers. Let's talk about the law too. They can put up a sign. It's not a law just because they decided to put up a sign. They can request that you don't carry a gun. If they think that you have a gun on you or they know you have a gun on you, they can ask you to leave. It's private property. So they, they could press charges or, or you know, misdemeanor charges or something. They could if they wanted to on private property because it's a posted sign. Only, after, only if you don't leave after they tell you to leave. Right? Only if they see your gun. And last time I checked, concealed meant people don't get to see your gun until you need it. There you go. Real yeah. quick, what's up, Casey? Can you hear us? Yeah, man. What's up, brother? All right, Casey in the house. We got the posse now going. Um, everything's good. We're talking about places that you're not allowed to carry guns. Ah. Um, but let's go right to this video from The View. Good good time to join us. Um, this one was on recently, and we watched it, and we spoke about it. But I just want to go on the record and say I don't like this show. <laughs> the Gun, Gun News Weekly? You don't like it? No, no, no. I would have never guessed that. In a million years. <laughs> All right, here we go. This may not be as such good news because community college students in Texas are now able to carry guns on campus and into classrooms. And should people be worried about this? Or Duh. is it a smart thing? Or Duh. what do you think? I, I actually love this story. Um, I'm not a gun owner. I, I, I spend a lot of time with gun owners. I've been in, spent a lot of time in Texas. And when you study these shootings, what you find out is that a lot of these lunatics, these maniacs, target gun-free zones. The, the Aurora shooter who went in and shot up that movie theater, that Batman movie, he went and specifically went out of region because all of the theaters around him that were closest to him People were allowed to carry, con they were concealed carry. They were allowed to have their firearms. He went to a theater that had a sign out front that declared that it was a gun-free zone. You see it all the time. I could, I mean, there's stats upon stats. The Crime Prevention Research Center came out with a stat that over 98% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. So I want those students who have a license to carry, who have gone through the process, who have been approved, to not be sitting ducks which in those process? classrooms. Can we just talk about We're that? Gone through which process? process? But They're licensed. Know, they have a gun license. Yes, but you, you do know that to get a gun license, you don't have to actually learn how to shoot the gun. You just to get a gun license? Yeah. Everyone I know who has a gun license has gone through Well, maybe they're from Jersey. Jersey. You, Jersey you know. Know. Uh, that's point one. Let's just note it right there. Uh, Googler, if you could keep track for us. Do you have to shoot a gun or learn how to use a gun in order to get a concealed carry permit? Let's just start, keep it going there. You may have done and it, but I'm telling you, is good. people can go and buy guns and never have to, never ever have to go to a gun range. They can have them in the house. But Joy, you have. I have a, a good thing. statistic so here I just that, I, that, that yeah. our crack research team came up with of 160 active shooter situations between 2000 and 2013. The FBI found only one case where an armed civilian intervened to stop an attack and that guy was a, a, a marine mm -hmm. it, uh, in 21 of these cases an unarmed civilian interrupted the attack and restrained the gunman statistically you are more likely to kill another civilian yeah. or yourself with a gun so, well, so, so this is, we this is part of the up? insanity that's going on in this right. country the, the right Aurora now. shooting specifically which the insanity is that statistic she just threw out by the way so we'll get back to that one as the third point up always bothered me because people said if there were more people in there with guns the last thing you need in a dark theater with adrenaline pumping is a bunch of people popping up armed because yeah, when someone yeah. comes to save the day who are they going to shoot at anyone with a gun like you're you're well, shooting so at minute, what about the wait. professors who give you an f i'd be scared to no. teach in that class you yeah. wait <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not undermining <laughs> campus security and I'm, I'm, police do their job but yeah why should a citizen who has gone through background checks, who has gone through the proper protocol, why should they be sitting there in that classroom if they, they've gone through the process? Every you single really person I know. Guns. Wait, we, the, we the have, gun we is not the problem. So the rest of the she doesn't have an answer for that, therefore they're gonna go to break. Ross, let's break this one down. Casey, you ready to break this one down? <laughs> okay, so the first point was, uh, they had no answer for the fact that 98% of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. And a lot of the stats that they're talking about, there's several variables. What qualifies it as a mass shooting? How many people were shot? Were there people killed? That's another one. Um, 
The second one was where she said there had been one case from 2000 to 2013 of uh, an armed citizen responding. Googler, you had some stats on that one? Stopped only one that stopped a mass shooting event. That's what they said. And Google, what was it that we found just messing around? I mean, 15 seconds on Google, I found nine. One of which is from this year in Chicago where an Uber driver with a concealed carry permit shot and wounded a gunman who opened fire on a crowd. Okay, 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 okay. You know why there aren't a hundred of those? Because the guy shot him before he could do mass shootings. That's why there's not a hundred of those people out there because good guys with guns are the only thing that will stop a bad guy with a gun. And if you're, and if you're not prepared for that fight, you're sheep in the pasture. Uh Oh, he's getting going early tonight. <laughs> you know, that, Mr. Ross gets fired up at some point during the show. He's getting a little revved up right now. It's good. Uh, the, the third point was interesting. She brought up the fact that she wouldn't want a bunch of yahoos pointing guns at each other in a dark theater. Now, we've talked about almost all of these, um, again, recent in the, in the past five years, national attention shootings. And we examined this one at length, and we all talked about the fact, yeah, that's, a, that's definitely an issue. However, most responsible gun owners, after they take care of a threat, are going to circle, search, scan, and then they're going to reholster their gun. They're not going to sit there waving a gun when the cops finally do show up, which we always know takes anywhere from no time to a lot of time. If Where, the cops were there dealing with the threat, you might not want to grab your gun. You know what I mean? But the fact is, is you carry a gun because it takes cops time to get there. In 10 seconds in that scenario is an infinity. I mean, that, you know. And, and again... The loaded gun and a good holster held by someone who's been trained properly is a lot more, again, it's just a better insurance policy for yourself uh, versus waiting for, again, the police who are trained to show up, analyze, and take care of a situation that you've already been face-to-face -face with. So, uh, so let's take this whole conversation down a notch. First of all, this is, what, six people sitting at a table, and, and which one of those own, even owns a gun? None of them, none of them have, have any experience with that. Is is obvious. The other crazy thing, Ross, was again the whole. I'd hate to be a teacher that gave a student an F if that student was a concealed carry permit holster a uh, holder. Oh, so, shut so up! Is that reflection? Wait, is that? Wrong? That was what she said right at the end. That's what she said right at the end. I missed that part. Well, yeah. is that a reflection? Then is that something that she's that she's projecting on someone else that she thinks she might do if she carried a gun? guy was a I'm sorry I, I don't know but to me that's about as as let's pretend I can make up a crazy situation in my in my mind that has not happened and just put it out there because it's a good argument you yeah. know, you know carry, I, I think these opinion shows are just that their opinion um the it's just it's their opinion and, and it's that it's that those uneducated folks on that think that way about guns. The reality is much different. And those that are watching this show know that. You know what I mean? They know that you're there to take the threat down. You're not there to wave your gun around when the cops come. You not, know what I mean? We yeah, all, yeah. all had the proper training once we get the, the inclination to carry a gun because it's the responsible thing to do. And that's what we are, responsible concealed carry permit holders. You well, know. Because well, there is some, some reality here. Go ahead, Casey. Before you, what ahead. would be, you know, obviously we can talk about this, and this has been brought up before, but what would be very interesting is in any of these mass shooting cases, like Sandy Hook, if it happened, or, you know, some of these other ones, the, the movie theater, you know, let's say you've got somebody that is carrying and you know, they've got just a small level of training, and let's just say they're a horrible shot. I think one shot in the direction of somebody, you know, where you've leveled the playing ground somewhat, I think the guy, you know, the guy that has the plan of, you know, suicide by a cop or, you know, I'm going to shoot myself after I'm done with this, you know, we, you we give them some fire in their direction, that may, are, that may happen right then. I mean, We haven't even talked about how many times brandishing – 
resolves a, a one-on-one or one-on couple uh, situation in America every, every yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, we know that we know that. Here's the stats on again. Whoopi saying that you know you can get a gun and you have and carry it and and not have to have any training. It's about half and half. It looks like correct. The yellow is are places that you have to actually fire the gun to get a concealed permit. The other ones you do not. Yeah. Okay. Colorado's in that in that list of we do not and most, if not all, of the classes held within in in my area anyway have fire time on the range at least during the class it may just not be required like yeah but but the other thing is is that you know we're not going to fix stupid nobody is right we give give stupid people cars Uh, cars kill more people a year than guns ever will uh in the united states accidentally or or otherwise whatever um I, i just don't this is a complete attack on the second amendment it's an attack on our right to protect ourselves and and honestly laws do nothing but leave leave the shepherds unarmed and and similar to the sheep i can also confirm that new york does not require live fire training you can take a course of live fire training and it will help you in getting your concealed carry weapons permit just because they are a issue state all right we're uh 23 minutes past the hour over under on ross using the term sheep <laughs> now, I'm not going to do it anymore. I, I realized I said that twice, it's but seven. I'm going to get my mind. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's changing gears a little bit. How about that? We'll get into some uh, in, other interesting gun stuff. Did you guys hear about TriggerCon? Uh, yes. TriggerCon. Is Trigger that, Con, the, Trigger Con. Is that the Chinese ripoff of Trigicon? <laughs> <laughs> It is actually an event out in the Northwest put on by Rainier Arms and Friends. Uh, it's basically an invite media show. Kind of sounds similar to a, to a big three without all the shooting, uh, but basically uh, some shooting. There was a media day, a range day that they had, and I can't. I, I guess you didn't see this. So I'm glad we didn't talk about it, but because it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think. Because I posted and got into some interesting conversations with uh, – the owner of Rainier, based on this one. Check this out. This was posted by Recoil. Watch it again. It's the title of the show, A Foldable Glock. Now, is there any need for this? Is this innovation? Is this gimmick? What do you guys think? It's complete. A gimmick, I would think. I mean, it, if, you had that in your dress, if you had it in your dress pants pocket, nobody, nobody would know what it was. But my God, it's it's. I mean, you you you're going to need to put it in a holster anyway because you're going to need a gun belt to hold that weight. Well, the trigger is the trigger is not exposed right here. But look at all the places the 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 spots that debris could get in if you dropped it. Well, and, and one, thing, oh, one thing sure. stood out about this is he never you, – you, I, I don't know if you can actually have one in the chamber uh, with this because of the trigger configuration and whatnot. I don't know the answer to that, but I do but know it, that it's twice as much as a retail Glock costs. Oh, so this is an actual thing. Oh, it's a real thing. It's, What's, it's the deep, deep. What's that? What's that? What's the niche? Where what are they trying to get at? It's ultra concealment because they used an awful big gun for that. Is oh, it was that a clip that I saw on it, like uh, to put it on a pants? No, like, uh, I don't know. I, I cha- uh, let me see. It seemed like there was a little like silver clip thing. No, nope, that's just becomes the back and the trigger here. Let's watch. That's a trigger see. guard. That silver stuff in it. Correct. But there's another spot he's talking about that it kind of goes into the. Uh, oh, hold on. I thought I hit the right thing. Watch it one more time. I got another one to show you after this. What happened there? Hold on. I'm clicking the right buttons and it's not doing what I wanted to. There we go. I mean, why? So you're talking about the thing right next to his thumb there? I can't see it. That looks like a magazine catch is what it looks like. It kind of oh, it locks it up on the on, so that it actually uh, the the 
grip actually locks up. Right. Now, check this out. The Life Card 22LR. Saw that, too. And yeah, but I'm not, I'm not seeing you for some reason. It's just got uh, a gun carrier logo. Click on me and click on you and click on me again and start your browser. Or, I don't know. I'm not tech support. I'm not good at it. Yeah, all that stuff. I get frustrated. There we go. That? All right, there we I go. I see. So there's the, the 22LR life card, which, again, stows like that, shoots like that. Boy. That's a little more practical than the, the right. lock, correct? Because it's a last-ditch effort, a last-ditch effort. It's a 22. Now, why not, why not throw out of the house and figure out how to use? I don't know. But why I mean, not? I mean, seriously, why not put a 45 in that? You'd make it a little bit thicker. A 22? I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, Trail 22. Blazer blazer fire fire. I agree. Trailblazer Firearms is the, is the name of the company there. I mean, there's been little things like that around forever. Yeah. Right. Derringers, yada, yada, yada. Like, right. All right, we got some state-by-state state news. Um, a concealed carrier carrying customer stopped a pharmacy robber, robbery in Phoenix. Uh, the suspect, who died at the scene, was identified as 30-year-old Stephen Holguin. He entered the Walgreens, according to witnesses. He was wearing a wig and aiming a gun at customers, employees alike, as he jumped over the pharmacy counter and demanded oxycodone from the pharmacist. It's unclear or how or when the armed customer who has not been publicly identified intervened, but Holguin did not make it out of the pharmacy unharmed. When cops got there, he was suffering from a gunshot wound and hiding in a back room of the business. They said it was chaos. They said there were workers from the pharmacy running with their hands raised in the air. They were crying and screaming. Next thing I know, I saw SWAT people coming in, according to uh, customers. It was a madhouse. I probably would have been much worse if there hadn't been a customer in there armed. I couldn't have said it better myself. So, Bomb wait a minute. Robberies are becoming common due to opioid use and the abuse, and it's con it's reaching epidemic proportions in many areas of the countries. According to the American Society of Addiction Medicine, drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the U.S., claiming more than 52,000 lives. That's a 400% increase since 99. Go ahead. Um, did the Was the suspect the one that was hiding in the back room with the gunshot or the, the person yes. that intervened? Yeah, it sounds like the person that intervened did what he did and then, and then complied. Yeah. Going after the Oxycontin. <laughs> yep. Here's a I mean, weird... I've, I've oh, been at pharmacies. Um, you know, I mean... I, I don't I don't spend that much time in a pharmacy and I've been there twice when somebody's been busted not for robbing but for fake prescriptions. Is this where you had your incident the other day? No, 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 no. It was at the doctor's office. <laughs> but for the, hey, but for the same thing. Uh oh. Oh yeah, I mean, that's, whoa. that's what it was. Huh? The guy was cut off of his meds because you know, he failed a, a drug screen. Wow. And, you know, demanded them. Got physical. Got violent. Just more, it's just more proof positive. More Not more it. cement to the foundation of why you need to carry a gun. Yeah. Well, there's Shit some happened. people that don't take it as, as serious as we do. I'm People not sure if you this story, but the Florida Sheriff's Office said, Taurus, please take your guns home with you. The Walton County Sheriff's Office of Northwest Florida is pleading with tourists to take their guns home after several of them were found left behind in rental homes last weekend. According to the Sheriff's Office, deputies picked up seven guns left behind by tourists and have seen 20 guns turned in since Memorial Day weekend all left behind as well wow, so you I'm gonna go up. and you check in to your rental home and you, you pull open the, the 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 bedside drawer and there's the bible and, and a nine 
I'm going to start setting up my vacations just following them guys around. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, man. Only two owners have reached out asking if guns could be returned, and all get guns held past 90 days will be destroyed or used in, uh, in training. Dude, in what kind of company loses a bunch of their product? What kind of person leaves behind their gun and then doesn't isn't like eh, maybe I should call that place? Damn, dude, I think I left twenty of them things lying around, man. Well, that kind of parlays us into another very interesting gun story. A Chicago buyback gun has turned up at the scene of a police-involved shooting years later. Yeah, they destroyed that one. There's an internal huh. affairs investigation after a gun handed in during a turn-in event in 2004 wound up lying next to a Latin Counts gang member eight years later in the suburbs after he was shot dead by a cop. William hmm. Boyd, a county judge, turned in his late father's 38 caliber Smith & Wesson to Southside Church in exchange for a $100 Visa card, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. The firearms acquired in the back buyback program are supposed to be destroyed, but this one was not. Huh. Chicago. And, and is there, Chicago. Is there an How many times have we talked about Chicago on this show in the past two months, three months? Hmm. And Interesting. I, I just wonder if there's an investigation. Are they just going to leave this alone? Do they need to – they should probably have a trail to follow on this thing because, you know, they blame – lawful gun owners for for you know guns getting into the wrong hands and it, it appears that the cops are responsible for some of this well there's the entire story and obviously there's two sides of the story and and the family is suing the cops are saying that one one thing they're saying something else and it sounds like he had you know uh, a gun on him when he was shot What's the other side of that story? We got it in a gun buyback. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about the story itself of him being shot by this gun. Gotcha. Uh, it's a deep story. But no, no. It's, it, there's an internal affairs investigation. We'll keep our eyes on this one for sure. Yeah, we, we really should. I'd like to see what happens with that. That That's a – hmm. Now, man, it's like, it's like I interlinked all these stories today somehow. New Jersey gun buyback netted 4,775 firearms in two days. Say what? Three cities over the past weekend. They were collected at churches in Camden, Trenton, and New York, Newark. They had almost 2,000 handguns, 1,142 shotguns, 1,000 rifles, 129. We need a sound effect. Da, da, da. Assault rifles, assault weapons. They got the highest payout of $200. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Gun buybacks. Hmm. Well, well, hopefully Jersey gets rid of them if they really get rid of them and they don't put them back on the street and gang members. It sounds right. like we need to do gun buybacks. Sounds like pretty good deals. Yeah, I wonder what they're calling an assault weapon. Somebody put a, a pistol grip on a twenty two and they thought oh, it's an assault weapon. It's 35 past the hour. just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in tonight over on Gun Carrier for the first time over on the YouTube channel and then also on Facebook page. What's up? I see some regulars there. What's up, guys? Appreciate you tuning in as always. Just a couple more stories to talk about tonight. We might not even go a full hour tonight. Then again, I could open up a can of worms for Ross and get him to say sheep. <laughs> That's usually good for about quarter till. Well, speaking of assault rifles, let's check out this story because I got some questions about this. Googler, I need your eye on this. Watch this one. Fayetteville are looking for this woman you see here who walked into a Sprint store, locked and loaded. And yeah, she terrified workers when she came in with that assault rifle, demanding cell phones. The robbery happened Monday on Good Middling Drive, right off Rayford Road. Morgan Norwood is live there for us this afternoon, where this video is getting a lot of attention online, Morgan, which police hope will lead to that woman's arrest. Yeah, that's right, Andrea. Well, the social media response has been tremendous and really helpful. Police tell me that they're investigating dozens of online and Crime Stoppers tips. So again, your tips are help helping. Meanwhile, fear lingers in this area. Neighboring business owners what tell kind me of that gun is this? really anxious to hear that this woman is in custody. Here she is walking into the Sprint store with that huge assault rifle. 
I'll pause it. Because we only shotgun, look, isn't it? Hold on. Store employee. Take a look at it there. Uh, I think it's an AR or, or one of those uh, Ruger ranch guns. What is it called? The Ruger, whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, the ranch rifle. The yeah. Or it's an assault rifle with no magazine in it. But I don't see the lower. You know what I mean? I don't see like a lower. Unless it's like a M1 Garand, like, you know, in like some sort of case. Like... I don't know. I don't think she's a huge girl either, though. You know what I mean? They, they call her petite. And it's not like she's towering over that countertop. I don't that know. Might, that might be a twenty two with the the non extended mag. Say this woman is no stranger to their location. On Sunday, they say she came in really irate about a cell phone she claims was never shipped to her. Sprint says there was nothing that they could do for her in their in her situation on a local le level, rather. But twenty four hours later, she came back to the store taking matters into her own hands. So then they talk to the guy in the gym next door, and he's like, yeah, I'm worried about things like this. They could shoot through the walls and hit me and my, my people over here. Anyway. Um, yeah, Don't mess with my dojo. When you think about it, it's kind of crazy that, uh, Ross, you're muted. Damn it. Uh, you shouldn't be brandishing a weapon for your cell phone. <laughs> she, the thing is, it's, oh, again, the – premeditation of it she had an issue at a retail store went home thought about it grabbed a gun came back the next day it was like screw it grabbed a new phone and left <laughs> so one thing i will note so and, and it so was fire. noted in the chat excellent trigger control she did have good I, again i can't fault her you know she 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 kept the gun pointed in a safe direction she kept her finger off the trigger um yes she had a gun but no she wasn't very assaultive with it it was that no, no bullets were flying. Now here's a story that makes me so glad that we don't sound like news people. Talking about a story like this with dramatic pauses for no reason. Is it Shepard Smith? No, but that you'll see in this one it's pretty it's pretty bad. So again, but it's it's an interesting story from Orlando. Uh, we'll talk about, let's check it out. In the busiest part of Orlando International, a federal agent shooting himself in the foot. Travelers ducking for cover during this airport scare. <laughs> that agent now nursing a bullet wound in his foot. Hundreds of people watching and snapping pictures of this wild scene that played out in the middle of the airport. Let's get out to Fox 35's Tiffany Teasley. She joins us live right now from OIA. Tiffany. I seriously can hardly stand it. Hey, 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 before you go anywhere, back up just a minute and show that scene they had on the back wall there. Stand by. Well, certainly, of the airport. Let's get out to find What does that the guy have on the right? to do with the guy shooting himself in the foot? The guy on the right has a foot, has a foot injury. That ain't the cop, dude. That's a guy with a flag on his shirt that says something proud. <laughs> with suspenders. Let's watch. Let's, right Tiffany will let us know. Tiffany. Tiffany. Well, certainly very frightening for passengers here. Orlando police say it happened here in the main terminal of the airport. Before you go through security, you can imagine the shock with thousands of travelers passing through here every day. We spoke with one of them who heard the gunshot. And all of a sudden, I heard an extremely loud pop, um, which echoed throughout this area. Jenny Folk says she heard the gunshot <laughs> here in Orlando International Airport, where Orlando police say a federal agent accidentally shot himself. A viewer sent us this photo of the area where the gun fired, leaving a mark on the ground. When I heard it, I knew it was a gunshot, but then when I seen the other people not reacting, I started to think, well, maybe somebody dropped a bucket from high off a ledge. Or this picture from the Orlando Sentinel captures the aftermath of the shooting happening in the East Checkpoint. Frost, that's him. Yeah, you're right. No, he must right. be. I, I thought he must I be thought, deep yeah, undercover. He was deep. Yeah. He's he's infiltrating. He's no anyway wheelchair with a bandaged up foot. Officers say he was unslinging his shoulder bag when it caught onto his holstered weapon. As the gun fell, he tried to catch it. That's when he inadvertently pulled the trigger, shooting himself in the heel. Yeah, it's definitely scary to think that that, that could have 
flown and hit someone else who, you know, an innocent bystander or whatnot, so. Bullet could have flown. Yeah, I'm glad the officer's okay. Fortunately, no one was injured. Despite the loud noise, Folk says other travelers didn't seem alarmed. I think that my fears were deep. Okay, I can't take any more hurt. So, so what's the lesson from this, guys? We all know. You don't catch your weapon on a drop. <sighs> if you somehow accidentally drop your weapon, let it fall. Let it fall. The ground is not going to reach up into the trigger guard. But it's so pretty. Yeah, but if you're carrying day to day, your gun ain't gonna stay pretty. I was kidding. I know, I know. <laughs> it's well, like it's like going to Jaeger's class. The first thing he's like, throw your gun on the ground. <laughs> like, oh God, don't start that. <laughs> remember when Stone Guy placed his nicely gently on the ground, yeah. <laughs> grinded it in. Shout out to Stone Guy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> You got oh, me. Stone! Stone guy! 223. Two, 223, two, baby. We miss him. Been forever. I need to guy. call old Stone guy. <laughs> we do need to get in touch and find out what's cleaning. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, this one is something badass. You want to see something badass? The Tribunist reported the new wrist accessory lets you shoot real fireballs as you punch. Oh, yeah. I saw this. Have you seen this? I have. Is this a Mortal Kombat attachment? Real fire bending. Hold on. I had to go to where the, the guy got busy. This video is sponsored by... Ha by not us. Hold on. Here he is. Come on. All right. I got the real Kung Fu master. Wait till you see this. And, and there's a 50 state or 49 state legal fire flamethrower that we reviewed and talked about earlier this year, last year. This is like a whole new level. All right, you guys ready? Check this out. <laughs> the Dancing Dragons. Uh, we kind of adapted it, just it up a bit with head and fists and top twists. He's got these things on the tape to the end of his hands. That shoot fire. Comic Con is going to be dangerous as all hell next year. Anyway, they can mass produce those anytime. Sign us up. We'd like a set. Kung Fu Master. Yeah, what, what's the, I don't understand why they have to link it to the martial arts. Last time I checked, there was no ninja shooting fire out his hands. Because the, what's the dude's name from um, was Street Fighter, the guy that can throw fireballs? Oh, my God, from the video game? I'm Are pretty sure. Been... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryu or whatever his name was. Yeah, it is Ryu, I think. All right, there we go. Uh, what's going on, Facebook? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Make sure you push that share button and the like it button and all that stuff. The like it button or the like button? Thumbs up. Um, what's up with the bell thing? The bell now on what? You got to hit it. You got to hit the bell so that you get notified. Hmm. YouTube's doing all kinds of things, especially with, especially with um, advertisers and, and search results for certain content right now. But we're not going to get into that stuff tonight. Um, However, I've been checking out this uh, Pew Research Report. Man, it's, it's a huge. Here it is. America's complex relationship with guns. It's like 78 pages long, and it's got tons of like research and charts and stuff like that. So one of the awesome. one of the ones we wanted to get into and have a discussion about tonight was this because I've always thought that. Um, when the average person that's not a gun person thinks of gun owner, they instantly think hunter. They instantly think of certain things. So here's here's some data to, t to ponder on and we can have a conversation about real quick. To 
of those boys. Are they still on? So there's the chart. Let's talk about it. Most gun owners cite protection as the major reason for owning a gun. 67% of gun owners. Hunting is only 38%. Sport shooting's 30. Part of a collection's 13. And for their job is eight. But overwhelmingly, six out of, you know, six and a half, seven people out of 10 say, I have a gun for protection. You guys got any thoughts on that one? I would say that 67% are everybody like me and you and most of the people watching, you know, I mean, that's, that's the only reason to carry the tool is for self-defense. Correct. I mean, yeah, when you hunt, you go grab your rifle and you go head out to the field and you hunt. But when you carry, you carry a tool. It's like, it's like, it's like being a professional. You know what I mean? You have, you have certain tools for certain jobs and you carry that tool for a specific job. Um, and I would say that, that my expectation would be exactly what you showed on the chart that most people would carry a tool for self-defense as a self-defense tool. I think it might even be a higher number to be honest with you. Well, I think you could add all those hunters in there too, because not only do people hunt, but those guys are gun enthusiasts, and I'm sure they're carrying because they well, know. They, 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 what it means is that a certain that that percentage of people that are hunters that own guns identify themselves as hunters first. It says it's the number one. That's their number one reason. Yeah. A secondary reason is obviously protection. Um, if they get charged by an animal while they're hunting, guess what they're using it for? Right, right. Hell, if they just see one they want to shoot, they're that's what they're using it for. It's not like they're going out there and karate chopping the damn thing. Right, right. Uh, oh man, I forgot to pull it up. One other thing I wanted to talk about tonight. There's, uh, there's an article that'll be posted either Friday or Monday. It sounds like on Gun Carrier talking about all the rebates, all the silly rebates that are going on right now. Started with um, the the Smith and Wesson shields. Um, there's, but uh, right now, right now, there's about six or seven or eight companies that I list all the different rebates. Where you go, I know Springfield, you buy a Springfield, you get a holster and three mags and, am, you know, some companies are offering ammo, some companies are offering rebates. The one that Century just dropped today is basically you buy anything that says AK on it, any of the RAS stuff, the Dracos, any of the, the C39 V2 stuff, um, and you get a $100 gift card back from then. You just fill out a rebate online, you print it, you fill it out, you send it to them, you get $100 back on your, on your, your AK purchase. I think it also qualifies for the Canics. If it does, that's crazy. And dude, remember those are those are American made. American. -made. I, I don't quote me on that one. Don't quote me on that one. I'll, I'll confirm that next week. I don't want to open up another program while I'm doing the show live. Um, but that's awesome stuff. And so we'll have that article drop soon. It'll give you a bunch of different deals that are going on right now. If you're in the market for buying a gun, man, what a great time! You tell me the shields are dirt, dirt cheap these days with the rebates. What two hundred right. bucks? Two 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 eighty? Two fifty? Yep. Dirty. Kevin, it One does more not thing. cover the mechanic. It does not. It does not. No. All right. Sorry, I misspoke on that. They did the canic thing, I think, last last month, uh, and those are so well priced anyway, so that it's not a big deal. Let's check it out. Um, when Spikes collaborated with Sharps Brothers and did the Jack. Which again is the whole lower. I just had it color coded that way. Um, it was you know mixed 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 thoughts, and I even had someone recently say, "What you know? Why would you even want that?" And I think it's a combination of things. First of all, the rifle is badass. If you look at the build video on this rifle itself, this thing is a badass rifle. There's no two ways about it. Um, however, the, this part of the magwell got milled out so that it looks like a skull. Well. One of the other things that, that was debuted, I believe, at the or right before or after, um, it's kind of a three-way collab at this point. Sharps Brothers collabed with uh, Rainier Arms, and I know that our friends over at Blown Deadline did the Sarah coating for this thing. Look at that! I love that lower dude. The Spartan helmet, I battle love worn. Um, and there's another one that's almost like a Crusader helmet, Ross, like, um, almost like, uh, 
what time period? You know, medieval times? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that one, but this one I did see. And Pretty honestly, cool. I, I think th these are th – that's a beautiful design, and and it just goes well with – I, I, I think it's awesome. Up in your oh, I've had some reservations. The teeth, you know, it's like, eh. I wouldn't have many reservations with that. Right on. So I, I think they're cool, too. It would be very see, be interesting to see, A, how much they retail for, and B, um, I, I mean, I'm assuming they're going to be over 350 bucks just for the lower if they stay true to the other. You know, the, the jack was three and a quarter, I believe, at best. I think they're right around 300 now. You can find them. I could be wrong. I think I'm right. Um, so yeah, and I like the gold battle worn look. It, it's just it, it really struck me as a, a great design. I hope they sell a ton of them. Yep, it's good stuff. So anyway, um, wrapping up the show. It's it's that time already. Tomorrow, I wanted to point out over on uh, American Gun Association's Facebook page, I'll be doing a quick live event mid afternoon, uh, talking about the American made Dracos, the AK pistols. Everything you want to know, everything you, you, again, need to know, including accessories, stuff like that, stuff you can get from Midwest. Uh, we'll be talking about it live over on American Gun Association. So make sure you're, you're uh, following that Facebook page as well. All right, guys, we did it. First episode's a wrap on Gun Carrier. What do you think? Went quick. Love it. It always does. It's always like, holy crap, I can never, I, I can never believe where it's already over. You know, it's interesting, though. It has been kind of slow with gun news over the summer. Um, took a couple weeks off with the the, the vac family vacation to kind of get revamped and re-rocking. And uh, stay tuned next week. Make sure you make a mark somewhere because next Thursday night we'll have a great show, I'm sure, uh, with a couple new twists as well. Dun, dun, dun. Hey. Dun, dun, dun. Best ever. Best show ever, guaranteed. Ever. Found the jack for 310. That's not bad. That's really good. 310 is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but most people get it, you know, and then you get it seracoded or treated or something, you know, so it's going to get, they're not cheap. You know what? At the end of the day, dude, Spikes makes a great lower. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spikes is a good, reputable company. Yep. Um, next week on the show, we'll be talking about holsters again. But there's a reason. Da da da. Trust me. Yeah, there's, there's a good reason. Um, the talk holsters, is there any not nah, nah, good reason? Nah. Holsters? So that's it. Uh, thanks to Frank and everybody who has supported us along the way. Thanks for everybody that's jumping in for the first time. We hope you like the show. Make sure you jump back. You're always welcome. We appreciate comments, input, suggestions, all that stuff. Facebook, we appreciate it as well. See some regulars, like I said. What's up, Jay? What's up, Monty? And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Googler, appreciate it as always, bro. No problem. Uh, Casey. Yeah, man. Good times. Good times. Go get some rest. Tell us your story first. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Ross, we'll get it. Thank you to everybody who participated in the chat, man. I, I great time in the chat. Um, join us next week. Yep. And uh, again, check out American Gun Association on Facebook tomorrow live Draco Talk. We'll talk to you then. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you check out guncarrier.com. Peace. <laughs>